Hello, welcome, I hope you're all well. So today's video is a bit of a chatty, kind of laid back video. I don't have any notes or any formal plan for this one. But today also marks one year since I picked up the keys to the house that I'm now sitting in. And I thought, what could I do to mark the occasion, if you will? And I thought maybe I could do a video sharing some of the aspects of the buy-in process or maybe things about the house that I haven't shared with you in previous videos. But then I had this little bit of self-doubt creeping in and I thought, Will that even offer you any value? So I thought I'll put it out on the community tab and if no one asks me any questions, then I will just very quietly slink away and not make a video and think, that was a bad idea, Kirsty. But I was pleasantly surprised because I got more questions from you than I expected. So thank you to each and every one of you who sent me a question. And actually some really, really good ones in there, ones I wouldn't have thought of. Kind of, if I'd have put this video together, kind of trying to guess what I think might be of interest to you, I think I would have missed some of these questions that you sent in. So again, thank you so much. I'll try and answer as many of your questions as I can. We'll see how we do for time. If I don't end up answering your question or it doesn't make the final edit, it's not that it was a bad question or anything personal. It's just that no one wants to listen to me for the next four hours. So um, let's get started in no particular order. Um, did you have to make any compromises when choosing your home? If so, do you have any regrets doing so? So yes, I definitely made compromises a couple off the top of my head. I wanted to be semi-rural. I now look out over green space, which is kind of closer to what I wanted than where I was before, where I was in the middle of a new build estate, but it's definitely suburban and not rural. Um, I wanted to be in a, in a detached, mainly because I've experienced very inconsiderate, noisy neighbors in the past, and it makes you very anxious about sharing a wall with anyone. Um, I'm not in a detached. Um, ironically though, this house is so much quieter than the detached I've uh, I lived in uh, previously. So a detached is no guarantee of peace and quiet, just a, an FYI. Um, I also did not want a downstairs bathroom. I've got a downstairs bathroom, which is not um, completely unusual in a Victorian property, but it's, um, it's it definitely wasn't on the wish list. Do I have any regrets doing so? I definitely don't regret buying the house. It's a beautiful house, genuinely beautiful house. But um, if someone was to ask me, what are the things you wish you could change about your house? I think some of the things I made compromises on probably would be on that list. Um, but you know, I think everyone makes compromises to some extent or another. I think this idea that we're sold that, you know, if you look long enough, you'll just find something that's perfect. I just, I, I genuinely don't think that's the case anymore. And um, by the way, before anyone says, why don't you move the bathroom upstairs? I've already looked into it. It's just, it's not from a financial perspective. It doesn't make any sense. So it's staying where it is. Um, next up, did you have any surprises when you moved in or notice any quirks you didn't see whilst viewing? Um, I didn't have any surprises, thankfully. I know some people do get them, you know, where a wardrobe is moved out and all of a sudden um, on moving day, you find out there's skirting boards missing and um, like falling off wallpaper behind an old wardrobe. But no, not at all. The property was in a really beautiful condition. So uh, no surprises, thankfully. Any quirks? Um, the upstairs toilet, the flush on it, instead of pushing it down, you push it up. I suppose that's a bit quirky. Um, we've had the, cist the top off the cistern. It is supposed to be like that. It's just a bit weird, I suppose. Um, the plug sockets in some rooms are in really weird places, particularly the bedrooms. They just don't make sense where they are, or at least not to me. And in some rooms, there's not enough. I suppose you could call that a quirk. Um, at some point I'll fix it, but I haven't as yet. And then I don't know if you'd call this a quirk, but I've lived in period properties before, but I must have forgotten about the spiders. I don't know what it is about old houses, because obviously all houses get spiders, but old houses, they seem to breed them bigger and braver and bolder than in any other place and to be honest, for the last few weeks, I've been dreading the coming few weeks because this time of year is when they start to come out to mate and they start coming in the house as temperatures start to dip. Oh, and I hate them. It's those kind of giant house spiders. Oh my God, they're so awful. Uh, last year, uh, so basically from now on, I'll be shaking the bed out before I get into it because last year, 
um, I was in I was just reading in bed and I moved the sheets and this massive spider ran up the sheets I don't think you've ever seen me move so quick oh I hate them last night um, in fact I'm having second thoughts about sitting on this floor now because last night one ran across the floor um, in the bathroom the other night I think I posted it on Instagram there was one on the ceiling that was so big it made me jump as I walked into the room and honestly, I'm telling you, it's like they have an attitude in old houses. They do not give to... Did you buy a house with sustainable elements? So I'm not 100% sure what you mean here. If we're talking heat pumps and rainwater harvesting toilets, then no. Um, this house is over 125 years old, so it's very rare that you would find that sort of thing in properties like this. Um, and... They're quite difficult to retrofit. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's usually at quite large expense and um, you probably have to destroy some of the original features or you might end up destroying some of the original features, which was what drew me to this house in the first place. I did look at things like the EPC to know how energy efficient it is and the roof has all been insulated and boarded out. The upstairs bedrooms have had internal insulation put in them so it's really nice and toasty up there um, and there's been some insulation put in parts of the downstairs. Ironically the EPC is the same here as it was in my new build detached so not amazing but not you know not bad either um so but I've got to be honest those things would have been a perk and they weren't something I was necessarily looking for in a property. I, I was really driven by, did I want to live here? Did I want to spend, um, you know, all this money on this house? Next question, what was the price would be interesting to know? Okay, well, I haven't shared this in previous videos and I'm not sharing it in this one, I'm afraid. Not because I'm trying to hide it or because I'm trying to, I don't know, make out more or less affluent than I am. Just because I don't think it kind of, means anything really without knowing without me sharing my income uh, and all that kind of stuff it, it, it doesn't really mean anything um also i live in yorkshire which is in the north of england and typically speaking houses here are much uh, much less expensive than houses in the south um for example and this kind of shows why it's so irrelevant and why i don't think there's any point in sharing it if i was to pick up my house and move it to somewhere like i don't know islington this house would probably be worth in the region of two, maybe even 2.5 million. Where it is in Yorkshire, it is not remotely worth that kind of money, I wish. Um, so it, it kind of, it doesn't really provide any value and that's why I've not shared it and I won't be sharing today. But I don't blame you for asking because I am super nosy about these sorts of things too. Okay, next question and kind of related to the last one. How much percentage is fine over asking did you end up paying? Were there any hiccups along the way before you had the keys in your hands? So actually, I didn't end up paying over asking and the more I think about it, the more kind of benefit of hindsight I have, the luckier I think I was. So as your question kind of alludes to, over the last two years, like asking price hasn't really been an asking price. It's sort of been, this is where you start with your first bid before we enter a bidding war. It's just been ridiculous. But um, I'll try and keep this story as short as I can. But back in the days when I was searching for a property, I was like a hawk on right move. I was like constantly refreshing. So I saw this property go on right move almost the minute that it did. And um, it piqued my interest because believe it or not, I actually lived on this street decades ago. Uh, so I, you know how it is, you're like, oh, that's interesting. And it was on at Offers Over X. So I thought about it for a little while because whilst there was lots of things I really liked about this property, there were, as I mentioned, one or two compromises. But I thought, you know what, just go and view it. So by two o'clock, I'd booked to view the property. And by six o'clock that evening, I was viewing the property. I was first through the door. I spent about 40 minutes here, had a really good chat with the vendors, got to understand what they were looking for from a buyer, went away, had a cup of tea, had a chat, and I would never have done this pre-2020, ever. I would have played it super cool, but if you're somebody that has been trying to purchase a property over the last two years, you'll know how insane it is. So I came back, knocked on the door, and I made them an offer at X, and uh, so no, I didn't make any 
I didn't offer over, I offered that price if that makes sense. And then I said that I would work to their schedule. Um, so I would complete as fast as they needed to, I would, or I would wait if they needed me to. And uh, they didn't give me an answer straight away. I told them, you know, think about it. I don't expect you to answer me now. And what seemed like an agonizing wait, but was actually only about a day and a half, they came back to me and accepted the offer. So I was the first in the property and no one else came in the property. I know that the estate agent said that there were other interested parties and did they want them to be allowed to view before they accepted my offer, but they said no. And I think they did me, I think that was the biggest gift because genuinely, in fact, it's making me go a bit goosebumpily thinking about it. Um, <clears throat> I think if, if they'd allowed other people to view the property and I think if this had gone to kind of sealed bids or anything, I don't think I'd be sat here now. I, 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 who knows, I could still be in my rented property. So yeah, I actually didn't. I think it was, I do think though, it was just that perfect alignment of they wanted somebody who got no change, somebody who was willing to work to their schedule, um, somebody who wasn't going to get cold feet. Um, and they knew that I'd missed out on other houses previously. In fact, I probably should say that I did um, kind of lose out on houses prior where I'd gone over asking and it still went ridiculous. Anyway, um, were there any hiccups? No, thankfully not. Although I didn't really relax until we exchanged because obviously anything can go wrong before you've exchanged, it's not really yours. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Let's move on. Did the stamp duty changes influence the timing of your purchase? I know you'd been saving to buy for a while, but I just wondered if that change made any difference to your plans in that you felt you had to make the most of it or bring things forward. From the outside, it certainly looked as though the stamp duty change was at least partly responsible from the surge in house prices from in 2020, 2021. So it did influence the timing of my purchase, but not in the way that you would think. If anything, the stamp duty holiday meant that it took longer for me to buy, um, not kind of bringing it forward. The reason being is that the stamp duty holiday brought so many people to the market, people that had the stamp duty holiday not been announced that they wouldn't even have been looking to purchase a property so it just made competition ridiculously fierce and you know it was just a fever pitch at some point you know i remember ringing to view certain houses and you know it'd been on right move 20 minutes and they'd say oh well we've already got 30 people booked in do you still want to view because this one's going to go to seal bids it was just ridiculous so um you know, there were houses that I would have been interested in that I had to walk away from. There were houses that I bowed out of the bidding war because I just thought this is stupid now. Um, yeah, so it, it just delayed it. And, you know, I used to get really annoyed when I would see Rishi Sunak saying, you know, this will be really helpful for first time buyers. Well, maybe it is, maybe it was helpful for people in the South and particularly in London, but you know, he perhaps needs to spend some more time in his house up near me because first time buyers up north, it did not help them at all. If anything, it, it, it took home ownership further out of their reach because it kind of removed the only benefit that first time buyers had got in the fact that they don't have to pay stamp duty and it made it a level playing field for everyone. And uh, yeah, it, it didn't help first time buyers, certainly not in the north. And yeah, I think it raised prices. I don't think anyone saved any money in the end because yes, you might have saved some money on stamp duty, but the amount that that caused house prices, at least in part to rise, um, just meant that you didn't really save anything in the end. Yes, I suppose there's a benefit in the fact that you could, you didn't have to have that stamp duty in your bank ring fenced. You could borrow that money at a cheap rate uh, and therefore kind of leverage that to move, to move on. But I don't think anyone actually saved any money. So I think it was one of the poorer decisions of the treasury and there's been a fair few poor ones of late. Uh, if you'd have been a fly on the wall at some points, especially when they extended the stamp duty holiday, you would have seen me say some very choice words and call Mr. Sunak a few choice names. I was not impressed with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Any buyer's remorse or FOMO after purchasing, how did you know it was the right house? Um, 
So this is a great question because I actually think buyer's remorse is more common than people think. There are entire threads on the internet of people discussing their buyer's remorse and that they feel completely alone because you know, it certainly seems like if all you do is watch kind of property shows that, you know, everybody finds a house and it's amazing and, you know, the struggle is the search, but once you've found it, it's just fantastic and I just don't think that's the reality. Um, I don't have any remorse now, but I had this really weird period of time. It was about eight months after I moved in, I would have said, where I really felt like, I've not chosen the right house. And I can't even tell you why I felt that way because I don't feel that way now. Um, yeah, so it, it's a weird one. I, I think the biggest amount of remorse I have is that I didn't jump sooner because I probably could have purchased, well, I could have purchased in 2019, but I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. Um, probably back then I wasn't as willing to make a compromise as I was later in the search. Um, and I, I just wish I'd jumped sooner. That's my biggest um, remorse. In terms of uh, FOMO, I, I'm terrible. I still look at right move pretty much every day. I can't help myself. And I think there's only been three, maybe four houses that I've seen come to the market since that, like if I was still looking, that I'd go and view. So not really a great amount of that. And how did you know it was the right house? Well, this sounds so incredibly twee because I'd offered on houses previously, but you know when you watch Location, 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 and uh, you know, good old Kirsty Olsop, often she'll have kind of people who are on the property search with her on the program say to her, I just don't get that feeling. And she says, if you don't have that feeling, it's not the right house, let's move on. And I, this sounds ridiculous, it, sound, it, it, it sounds stupid, but, when I walked in this house, I knew it was my house. Uh, it's so weird, it just felt like my house. So, um, yeah, and every, all of my uh, kind of family that have viewed the property um, after I got the keys, they were like, this house was just made for you. So I know that's probably not helpful, but I think there is something in like, yes, that, that kind of gut feeling. Okay, next question. Um, what are some of the things you wish you checked, sorry, what are some of the things you checked or wish you checked about the state of the house when you were in the process of buying, like the little things such as checking the water pressure on all the taps? So there's nothing I wish I'd checked. Um, it's probably worth pointing out that this house was done to an incredibly high standard. The vendors weren't actually intending to move, so everything had been done with the viewpoint that they were going to stay here very long term. They'd been here 25 years already, but they inherited a property, which is why they moved. So everything has just been done to such a beautiful standard. Also, the first time I viewed the property, I was here about 40 minutes. The second time I viewed, believe it or not, I was here about two and a half hours. That was after my offer was accepted, by the way. I don't think they'd have given me two and a half hours if I wasn't, you know, if I'd not made an, an offer that was accepted. So I walked through everything every room, um, you know, we talked about, you know, which bits are original features, which bits are sympathetic. We went through everything. I didn't check the water pressure or anything, but no problems, thankfully. But I have checked it in other houses when I viewed. Um, so yeah, and by the way, I'm not suggesting that just because something looks nice, you don't need to check these things. Um, I know my friend bought a property a good number of years ago now, and she bought it because it looked done, and yet when she got the keys, she found all sorts of stuff. So it is worth checking um, bits and bobs, but it's probably worth mentioning that the vendors don't live far away. Um, you know, if I'd found loads of problems, I could have just gone and knocked on their door and said, oi, <laughs> you've sold me a pup. Uh, anyway, um, next question. Maybe some expectations and reality difference between being in a homeowner versus rent. Um, there's not been any um, kind of differences really. I think the only time I thought about it was we had some kind of bad storms back at the end of last year and then at the beginning of this year and there's been a leak in the orangery that's off the kitchen. And uh, I remember thinking at the time, oh God, I'm gonna have to do this. If I, you know, if I was renting somebody, I could just call somebody else to do it. Um, and there's been a couple of issues with the boiler. And again, I remember thinking, I mean, heck, if I was renting, I wouldn't even have to think about this cost. But again, you know, it depends on your landlord. The very first, um, the very first flat I ever lived in, 
they were absolutely useless, useless uh, landlords. It was kind of one of these that was owned by a company. They left me without hot water for ages at one point. They were awful. So it's no guarantee just because you're renting that things will get done immediately uh, or to your standard or how you would like it. So yeah, um, and I, I suppose the positive of being a homeowner is that I've been able to do certain things that I wanted to do to make things more my taste so i've done quite a bit in the garden uh so yeah i no regrets next question what have you not been able to plan for or do due to rising costs in the economy are the delays regrettable or is it something that more time to plan and think about is beneficial so i've always been a big believer that there is a benefit in living in a property for six to twelve months before you do any major renovations if you can because Often when we first get the keys to a property, we think we will use it in a certain way. And yet once we live there for a bit, then the reality is quite different. So um, I've always believed that there's a benefit in that. However, I think if things weren't the way they are in the economy, I might have been tempted to um, make a start on the kitchen. When I viewed the property, kind of I always knew that at some point that would probably want updating but it's perfectly serviceable as it is, so I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, I saw this morning that they're now predicting that bills by, that by April, energy bills could be as high as £7,700 a year. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So I just don't feel like going and splashing out on a new kitchen when it's perfectly usable as it is. It might not be what I want, might not be, you know... Um, that you know there might not be that much counter space but it's perfectly fine by the way if i'm not elaborating enough on these questions i apologize if you've got any further questions just pop them in the comments but i'm trying to not make this video too long um next question how did you come up with a priority list of what needed to be done and bought first very rarely do people have lots of funds left over to furnish and renovate straight away so i'd be curious to see what and how you chose to go around uh, about the first few weeks and months so as I mentioned before, the property was in a beautiful condition. Apart from the kitchen wanting updating at some point, um, the property was in pretty much turnkey condition. So I haven't needed to think, oh, that needs to be done. Uh, in terms of kind of furnishings and furniture, most of my furniture I have had for over a decade. I at the when I very first kind of moved out from home I just bought stuff I liked whether they were on trend or not and I've just kept them so the table in the background I bought that a decade ago and I also bought it second hand the furniture behind me and stuff I've had for years so I didn't really have to uh, kind of think about that the I can speak to when I first rented though I, I just took my time and it's surprising how little you can manage with if you need to I remember when I first moved into my flat I had a sofa that I already owned my tv was sat on a coffee table that I already owned um I had and I, I think I bought a fridge a tv and my bed that I actually still have so and oh and I, do you know what? I think that was it for a bit. And I just very, very slowly bought bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, and that, that's how I did it, just slowly. I think for here as well, um, again, the vendors were incredibly kind. And the more I think about it, the luckier I was. Um, they actually gifted me all of the curtains that were here and they are custom made curtains because the ceilings are so high so they would have been incredibly expensive for me to purchase they also gifted me all of the light fittings that are um they're they're very traditional they really suit the house so they gifted me all of the light fittings so yeah i was incredibly lucky and i didn't have to spend on any of those things <laughs> yeah very very lucky um Next question, have there been any expenses that took you by surprise? I know that you planned thoroughly, but even with that, did anything surprise you? So no, actually, uh, yeah, I do tend to plan pretty thoroughly and I am one of those people who will research things to the nth degree. So no, nothing surprised me. I will point out though that I had moved a couple of times in rented and I always knew that that first month or so when you move is a killer just kind of switching your um, utilities over and um, insurance just random little things that you have to pay for it's always a killer so I kind of knew to make sure that I'd got plenty of funds that could be used for anything that might crop up but no nothing really surprised me there 
Um, what have you done to improve the house since you bought it? Did you complete everything on your to-do to list for the first year of owning it? So my to-do list for the first year was kind of flexible. I knew that some things might be achievable and some things probably were just a wish rather than realistic. Um, so I haven't actually done much to the house. As I say, it was it was gorgeous as it was. So I did think I might buy some more art. You will see kind of in the background of my videos, I don't have much on the walls, but I haven't really seen anything that I particularly liked. So I haven't uh, bought anything as yet. I'm sure I will over time. Um, in terms of what I've done to improve the house, again, the house was beautiful. I have done some things in the garden and um, kind of on a budget really, um, but not done a great deal. And then lastly, would you do a full house tour? So um, this is a, an interesting one and I get why you're asking it. And I'm so flattered that people are even interested. Um, and you know, as I say, I get why you're asking because I love property shows and I've often watched house tours here on YouTube. And I imagined when I was kind of through the process of searching, I imagined that I would do one, but just recently I've had some feelings around it. So being on the internet, putting yourself out here like this, opens you up to all of the good things about it. So all of the people that I speak to in the comments, the vast majority of you are just lovely people who you know quite happily engage in sharing of opinions. We don't always agree, but we do so politely and um you know the community it, it's it's brilliant and let's be honest you know so far i've turned down every sponsorship i've been offered um, that might have to change at some point with with bills getting so high um but let's be real about it you can make some, you can make money doing this so there's loads of positives of um being online but there's also the bad side of it so uh, some of you know I've had some experiences recently with just vile comments and threatening comments and I don't even understand why because I try really really hard to be balanced. I avoid certain controversial subjects that I would love to talk about but I just can't be bothered with the hassle that comes from it. I also know a few people that are you know quite large influencers in fairness but they've had some bad experiences where people have followed them so if they go to a hotel they don't share where they are until after they've left because they've had experiences where people just turn up um, and it's a bit of a security issue um, I also know uh, I was listening to a youtuber the other day who somebody had watched she doesn't really give away where she lives or anything um, but somebody had watched one of her videos and something she'd seen, something someone had seen in the background of one of her videos, from that they'd been able to do a massive search of the area that they thought she lived in and then worked out where she lived and then they were messaging her saying, I know you live alone um, and I know that you live in this apartment building. To me, that's terrifying. I mean, thankfully, nothing has nothing has happened, but I just find that really, really scary. Uh, even things that I've told you in this video today, for somebody inclined, they might be able to try and pinpoint where I live. Um, and I also think I have some feelings around other things. Sorry, I'm waffling now, so feel free to turn off if you want. Um, but there's a couple of YouTubers that I watch from time to time and they share so much about their house, their life, the area that they live in, that although I would never do anything with this information, some of them have been so just not even thinking about privacy and security that I know actually where they live. There's one girl in particular that her house is quite unique and it would take you literally two minutes on the internet to find out her exact address. I find that really strange uh as i say i would never do anything with that information but still there's the, and then there's two other girls that i know of that again i because they've shared so much i know where they live and i just think that that is not a good idea that it, and it's even instagrammers there's one girl i i don't even follow her but she's been suggested to me so many times you know occasionally you go and have a look and this girl has shared so much about her house, her family, her children. I know 
what school her children go to, what sort of time they get picked up, the ages of her children, when their birthdays are, um, kind of from their house tour, what rooms their children sleep in. And I mean, I'm not somebody who would ever do anything with that information or even, it wouldn't even enter my head to do anything untoward with that information. But if you, if you were someone that way inclined, you could go to their Instagram and find out all this stuff which could put their family at risk and I don't know I just have some weird feelings about it so I'm not saying never and I'm not trying to suggest that I am some you know somebody that somebody is going to be remotely interested in finding out where I live I think the vast majority of people don't care um and that you know I'm a tiny channel and yeah I think the likelihood is is that I will be perfectly fine and perfectly safe so I might do um, some tours, but they might be just rooms rather than walking through every single uh, room. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not saying never. I'm not saying no. Just I have some weird feelings about it uh, that I need to work through. So I might, I might do it. I might not. I'm waffling now. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope that it was interesting or helpful in some way um, and I hope I didn't waffle too much. If there's anything you want clarification on, as I said, just pop it in the comments below uh, and I'll try and come back to you. I think I answered all of the questions, but if I did miss, miss any, um, I apologize. Again, just pop it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer you. I am gonna have to go because this one is demanding dinner. Uh, and I've got a couple of videos coming up for you in the next week. I uh, have one on the rental sector in the UK and also one on ideas that you can start today to prepare for the upcoming winter. So hopefully you'll enjoy those too. Anyway, I'm gonna go before I waffle anymore uh, and Coco demands anymore. And I will see you in the next one. Bye now.